Santa Baristo. Coming out of La Paz Harbor at low tide. Coming into this harbor, it's important to stay between the navigational beacons. Because on the right side of that red beacon, there's a almost a uh, exposed shoal at low tide. Definitely gonna ground your boat. Here's a green one. Seventy miles off the main road, or something or thirty miles. I don't know, some crazy amount that it takes about seven hours in a four-wheel drive to get down to Highway One. It's Sunday. We found a friend. San Evaristo is a tiny fishing village on the east coast of South Baja Peninsula, approximately 75 nautical miles northwest of La Paz. It has a total population of only about 70 people. Yeah, we're about to paint our boat name on a shell, Poland 2015. Lago team. There's a few boats that we know. There was a uh, castaway right there. Yeah, very cool. This young man's going to give us some paints to create our own masterpiece on this right here. <laughs> My first mate <laughs> made the wall of fame. Yeah. That is cool. What a cool spot. <laughs> Lupe's and Maggie Mays is a restaurant and a convenience store. Makeshift cabanas for, I guess, for rent. They're just OSB painted with thatched roof. You got a hammock. Looks like it has some kind of a primitive plumbing. Plumbing. Yeah. So if you come off the beaten path, you need a place to stay. There it is. San Evaristo. You can take a tour. Banos. It's blowing pretty good today. Our dinghy is way over there. We gotta go across the bay. Walking down Main Street of Evaristo. Little windy today. San Evaristo High School. <laughs> I don't know. It's the school. Doesn't look like anybody's home. But yeah, little building. Yeah, it looks like school's not in session today, sucker. Directly across the hill on the north side of the peninsula are the salt ponds. 
This one is just a mom and pop operation. However, according to geomexico.com, the largest salt making facility on the planet is near Guero Negro on the west coast of Baja California Peninsula. It produces about 9 million metric tons of salt each year. the sails here just a little bit the wind shifted <coughs> so we can head up a little bit you can't really tell from these from the video ever but these waves are two seconds apart probably good what I don't know three four feet maybe but they're square we're in uh, San Jose channel we left this morning about 45 minutes ago Heading north to Molare. The first stop at Agua Verde. Actually, no, we're stopping at Timba, Timbabiche or. I don't know if we're stopping at Mango Solo, but. Sierra de la Giganta mountain range makes for a dramatic view when sailing the east coast of Baja. Mexico's fishing is definitely on point. You also get your dose of the pastel colored sun rises. We're going down the uh, the main street to a tienda. Holy crap. I love this. This is great. Are there sidewalks? <laughs> Cat. Oh, I ate it. <laughs> I think that's our tienda, that's our mini mart. What kind of peanut butter is it? Paladino. All right. <laughs> What's in there? Oh, maybe that's somebody else's. No, that's all Holy crap. Bahia Agua Verde. Green Water Bay in Spanish, which definitely lives up to its name, is a majestic little bay with a fishing village, a church, two beach palapas, and a school. It is a favorite stop for sailors and campers alike. We're going for a little walkabout up on the ledge. On this isthmus we walked up the road and this gentleman right here is greeting well he's clearing the road all by hand with his two sons unbelievable it's really not possible to describe the oh the beauty of this place i don't think the camera captures it this little fish jumping around. We were sitting in a little palapa over there 
with a thatched roof. And uh, now we're heading towards the little village that way. And uh, here's the road that this gentleman's clearing. There's a gentleman that lives in that little house right there on that little isthmus. And uh, it doesn't have windows. The, house, the bed is outside. We walked past and he just had the biggest smile on his face. And if anybody listens to Kenny Chesney, I'd recommend listening to Song The Life because that encompasses exactly the sentiment of this place. Came up on a, looks like a well for the little village. Here are the, there's the plumbing. Looks like it's all closed off, at least on these valves. And you can hear bees buzzing because of the fresh water. So these little guys come over here and drink up right there. Yep. Here's a little town of Agua Verde. That's probably the main drag right there. Yep. A little community. We uh, had pretty amazing fish tacos there yesterday. Where that flag is blowing right there in the wind. And uh, Shelly signed the logbook. Here's the Solitaria, Roca Solitaria. Yeah, very cool. Dirt streets, just the way I like it. <laughs> no? Hi. We met these lovely people. <laughs> Had this wonderful lunch with some fresh fresh fish and tortillas. That's our view. <laughs> We continued our trek northwest towards Puerto Escondido, a little harbor just south of the town of Loreto. Pot of friendly dolphins joined us for about 45 minutes that morning. Closed though until I think noon or one o'clock. Yeah. It was four to uh, four pills. So his we got six milligrams. So his would be two. Yeah. So so correct. Two. And then how often did you once go? on day one? Just one time on day one. Then repeat four tablets. Santa Avarista this morning around 10 a.m. after we took our fuel. That is Isla Coronados. We we're gonna stop there, but we're making good time and it's supposed to blow tomorrow. So we're just gonna go to the next stop, another 15, 17 miles north towards uh, Bahia. 
Konzeption. Loretto is off in the distance. That way. Yeah. Very light winds today. Seas are flat. So we've been just motoring. We're making good time. destination and we're not moving we're not moving because we're in four feet of water yep there's two types of sailors in this world ones who run aground and ones who lie about it So, luckily, it's a sand shoal, it's no rocks. Two more hours before we can get this thing unstuck. I got the anchor out. <clears throat> and uh, here's the shore. Yeah, buddy. A little, a little bit more line out. <laughs> a little bit more line. A little bit more chain out. Get this thing dug in. Yep. We were cruising right along. We were cruising right along and I looked down and I said, man, the bottom looks super close. And at that moment, it just went, do, 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 do. we hit sand. Yep. I guess you gotta find beauty in all situations in life, even when you ran your boat aground. Uh, look at this sunset. bouncing up on the bottom right now the boat's actually sitting upright before it was leaning to one side and we were super 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 low now we're actually somewhat floating but with every wave action up and down the keel hits the sand Okay, we're gonna thumb it to Mulahe. Hopefully, nice day this morning, Saturday morning. We'll see how we come out on the other side on this one. <laughs> All right, so we found the, this gentleman is gonna give us a ride over to Mulahe. Yeah. Please say again your name. Baltasar. 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 Yeah. Baltasar. Soy Pablo. Pablo? Shelly. Shelly. See. Si. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, he sells seafood and we got big ass scallops, scallops and shrimp. We're getting a half kilo of each. And then he's going to put it in the freezer. And we're going to pick it up when we come back from Mulaje. What a guy. Baltasar. Tortillas. Those fresh tortillas really look delicious. I should have asked for permission first before I started filming. Little town of Mulahe. Magical. Slightly deserted. Uneven streets. Telephone. Oh. What is that? <laughs> not sure where we're at, but I'm not sure if it's like the old jail or 
Hmm. Very cool. Hope it's on somebody's house. <laughs> the town of Mulaje was the catalyst for sealing my love with Mexico. I came to this town as a youngster back in 1992. A lot has changed since then. Some of it is even disappointing. But the beautiful memories of Eroica Mulaje of the old will live in my mind forever. There is also no shortage of amusement in good old Mexico. I'm gonna try to catch a ride. Thumb it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punta Arena over here. We met some incredible people. They're completely off the grid. They built this house. She invited us into her home. And, uh,. Sandy and Peter are in an RV over there. Those are the people that helped us out to get the fishermen, which are the boats, the pongas right there. The two kids that came out to uh, pull us off the sandbar, we uh, went down to give them a little bit of loot to compensate them for their, for their generosity. And this is a beautiful little bay, the owner. Of, uh, of this casita here. Shelly was talking to her about house sitting for the summer. She was all, all about it, but now that we know how hot it gets here, it may not be a, such a good idea. It's, apparently it's super humid, super hot. The water is the same temperature as, as the outside air. And I don't think they have air conditioning, so I'm not sure if Shell's gonna decide to do that but what a beautiful spot tomorrow we have to navigate the channel deeper out in the deep water because that's all sandy shoal so we don't make the same mistake of grounding the boat we just bought some fish a uh, local fisherman's wife came by in her vehicle sold us some snapper for fish tacos so it looks like fish tacos tonight and maybe uh with the leftover scallops what do you think shell i think this is like the best spot ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah how cool is this very cool fish tacos tonight with leftover scallops oh yeah and shrimps it's monday January 24th, we're leaving Bahia Conception. I'm gonna take him a quick stop over at this little bay on our starboard bow. And uh, leave to make the crossing over San Carlos about 3.30, it's uh, 80 miles approximately. The last I recorded, I believe, was uh, we were trying to hitch a ride from Mulahe, and uh, we did get picked up by a gentleman from New Mexico, of all places. He uh, bought a couple of properties here, one in Mulahe, one right on the water over at Playa El Burro. So it turned out we walked for about two miles. We weren't as lucky as uh, leaving Playa Santa's back, but nonetheless, <laughs> Mexico delivered again. Now uh, we'll be crossing all night, arriving. Ducks on the squid, arriving um, San Carlos in the morning. Switched on the sail this morning. Took down the 135 Genoa. And uh, this actually came with a boat. Just a jib, 100%. I think I like it better. It's not overpowering the boat. In uh, slightly higher gusts. 
I gotta adjust the track. Stay so. But uh, it's got a nice higher cut, and uh, we're going full canvas. It's about 13, 14 knots right now, and uh, we're at probably 20, 20 degrees keeled over, maybe 25. about 13 miles away from maybe 11 San Carlos sounds about to uh, rise about a half hour overall a good trip had great winds until about an hour and a half ago we're motoring right now winds are about four and a half knots. They were around 16 for the most most of the trip. We got the birds bombarding the ocean. There's probably a big maple down below. San Carlos this way and uh, Wymus is over there. What a change from Baja, huh? Mm -hmm. We're not gonna sell you any alcohol. <laughs> There's no fun to be had. They've got a, they got a tuba going. <laughs> like really? <laughs> got a tuba. <laughs> Oh, you see me? 